Oh, <laughs> it is uh, messy in here. I have not used this room in about a week and a half since I built my never ending story diorama. Instead, I've just been enjoying the spring weather up here in the frozen north and taking a mental health break. And it's been awesome. I've just been really in the zone, landscaping and setting up the garden. You know, in, the, in two days, I shoveled and moved 15 yards of topsoil. And I'm about halfway through shoveling and moving about the same amount of mulch. So it's been busy, plus lots of digging. So much digging and cutting grass, like, like edging it and carrying lumber and building planters and also, reminding my muscles what they do, what they're for, like they were soft for a while. And I've been enjoying the playoffs. Been adapting again to homeschooling as our province moves somehow to being the hotspot in North America for this nonsense. Uh, how did we get here? We were just doing so good for so long. Anyway, I've been enjoying family time, all that. It's been a good week and a half despite not touching any paint or paintbrush or modeling supplies. And sometimes it's really important to do that, but I still got to make a video this week. I'm going to be honest. I'm making a lazy video because I want to get back outside uh, for one more day, enjoy it a little bit more before I have to get back into the regular work grind. So I'm doing one of those retrospective list videos that everybody loves, except this time I'm going to be looking at the projects that, uh, that keep me up at night. The stuff when I look at it, it really bugs me. The stuff that just, oh, I wish I had not done it like that. I wish I had done that differently. Most of my projects, probably every single one, has some flaw or failure or thing that went wrong that I had to change course on or redo or do differently. That's a big part of this channel and a big part of the hobby and I'm very clear about that. And usually I'm at peace with whatever happens. But once in a while there are things that, you know, just irk me every time I still look at them and I wish, oh, I, I, why, oh, why didn't I do that differently or better? Why did I screw that up? I was gonna make a top five. Thankfully for my own sake, but not good for this video, is I couldn't find five things that I felt this way about. And you might be thinking of something like my Tiger Monk diorama, if you remember that video where I made this beautiful base, I painted this mini that I was really happy with, I got this sweet scene set up, was ready for a beautiful water effect, and I screwed it up by mixing a certain type of two-part resin with uh, some tinting that was water-based and it went to crap. That was a very entertaining video. That's not something I regret because I did actually take that. I still put that mini on a base that, although much simpler, I still really like. I look at it and go, I'm proud of that. That looks good. And I saved the other base and ended up reusing it in another project. So that doesn't fit my criteria. Stuff I'm talking about is the stuff that when I look at it on the shelf, I just am not happy about it. And I can only find three things. The first one is my recent sewer rat diorama. Man, this is like a 98% amazing piece. And a 2%, oh, just didn't work. I love this idea, getting actual three inch uh, ABS sewer line, putting the sewer rat in there, building this tiny little vignette scene. It was so good. I was happy with the mini uh, painting. I was really happy with everything. And I was all set to do the resin pour. And you know, I, it went bad and I still don't know exactly why. Actually, I have theories about why it had to do with the two layers being poured and temperatures, but it went sour. And if you remember, it turned all gloopy white and disgusting and it ruined the piece. Now I powered through it. I did what I think was the right thing. I ripped it all out and then I redid the pour. And I now have a finished piece that is still respectable. And a lot of the stuff I like about it is still there but it would have been so much better had that first nice pour worked out. The second pour was thick. It had to be a lot deeper. I had to tint it a lot more so it's not translucent and you're missing all this cool stuff that I added to the bottom of the sewer. It made the rat go higher and just in general, it's, it's not as good. Still glad I finished it. Still glad I made that video. Still glad I shared it. 
But every time I look at that piece, I just go, man, this could have been the best thing I've ever made. And I really wish I could get another good shot at that pour. I never even ended up uh, sanding the outside of it and making it look all nice like I would have because I was kind of bummed out that it didn't turn out as nice as I wanted. So I just wanted to move on. So that was, uh, that's number one. Before we go into the last two though, I need to take some time to tell you about the sponsor of this video, the people that are allowing me to do this nonsense and make a lazy video. Hey, if you're watching my videos, there's a good chance that you're interested in learning new skills and trying your hand at different artistic ventures. Now, while channels like mine are a great place to do that, Skillshare offers a much more structured and ad-free environment with classes led by experts to help you grow whatever hobby or creative venture you're passionate about. There's a lot of subjects being taught there that are totally applicable to miniature hobbyists and even people world building and storytelling through tabletop RPGs. There's a bunch of classes Classes on things like painting, drawing, design, writing, photography, video editing, you name it. Lincoln Michaels, for example, has a class called Science Fiction and Fantasy, creating unique and powerful worlds, and it's a perfect example of a class that could be applied to those of us creating unique worlds for friends and families to game in. At less than 10 bucks a month with an annual subscription, it's a great investment for creative people looking to refine their art. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get 30% off an annual premium membership. So you can explore your creativity. Even if you've already had a free trial of Skillshare in the past, you can still take advantage of this offer to get a full year of unlimited learning and creative exploration. Thanks, Skillshare. Now, number two. This one is one that I think a lot of people were surprised didn't make my top five best for favorite, top 10, whatever it was, favorite builds of all time. Cause there's so much I liked about it and it was such a journey and it was really good experience. And that's my zombie diorama, 75 millimeter. I love so much about this. The model's great. I love the way I did the cutaway effect. I set the scene, mm, I love it. But there's a problem. In the video, I struggled for like a few days trying to get that front face really nice and flat. I had issues with joint compound sinking in and sanding and building it up and going back, trying to get a nice flush, flat, you know, frame on the front of it. And I did eventually get it. I finally, you know, filled it with milliput, sanded it, and I got it good. By the time I shot that video, it looked, it looked good. And I was happy with it. And I put it on the shelf. And I was like, yes, I did it. It's cool. I like it. And then a couple weeks later, I was sitting here. I looked across the room and the light hit it in a certain way. And I noticed that whole area in the cutout was really obvious and there were lines and I got up close and it was bulging and it looks awful now. I don't know how on earth Milliput could expand after a couple of weeks, it should be stable. Maybe it didn't, maybe the MDF around it shrunk a little bit. I don't know, but now it does not look good. There's a big bump there. You can see it, it's ugly. It distracts from the whole piece. You know, sometimes it's okay if there's like ugly elements or mistakes on a piece, but something like this, it draws the eye to it and it's really distracting. It really bums me out. I might possibly be able to fix it. You know, now I got a tabletop, uh, like a sander, uh, in theory, I should be able to take it, push it on and sand that area nice and flush and repaint it. And by this point, the material should be very stable, but I'm really hesitant to do that because all of that sanding dust is gonna get kicked up onto the finished model, like on the, the, the zombie, the dirt, the, the, all the flocking, everything, and could make a big mess that I won't be able to clean. And I can't think of a good way to mask it off to do it. So I haven't yet, and it just sits there being a thorn in my side rather than being one of my favorite things I've ever made. But it doesn't bug me as much as my number one uh, biggest regret. My D&D book nook. I put so much effort into this one and planning and I really got it right. I thought I was doing everything right. I wasn't rushing things. And near the end, you know, it was something I was really happy with. I had integrated lighting that was going to glow in the water and it was going to be really cool. I even went out and bought better resin instead of using the five minute epoxy. I got some uh, crystal easy cast, whatever. The one that works pretty good. It uh, dries very slowly, but it doesn't really bubble. It, it's good. And it leaked and I lost it all. It all spilled out, made a huge mess. Uh, and then after that, I entered frustration mode and reset mode and tried to fix it. And I went back in and I did it again. I ended up the second time around, just like the rat one, to cover up the mess from the first try. Um, tinted it too heavily, made it too thick. It completely obscures all the cool lighting that I had added. Uh, you know, sitting in a dark shelf, it's 
doesn't do its job. And that one really bugs me. It's the, like the other two are annoying and it bothers me. This one really gets to me and there's no way I can fix it. There's nothing I can even attempt to do to fix it. The only thing I could do is build a new one. And I might, you can make a hundred different book nooks and they're all different and new. There's so much source material you can use. Even if you just want to make a D&D &D one, there's so many that you can make. I can think of a bunch that I'd like to make. I'd love to make like a Castle Ravenloft one, a Beholder Lair. Like there's several really cool D&D &D themed things that you can do. I mean, not several, there's hundreds. There's several that I'm thinking of that I would like to do. And that's one that I might one day revisit and make again uh, to redeem myself because that one, I, oh, it gets to me. Yeah, it doesn't look very good. Uh, it looked just good enough to finish and get on camera. Uh, but the, the, the whole point of that video was the journey and not the finished product. So I regret that one. But you know, other than that, like I said, all the other stuff, I'm cool with. Uh, the mistakes, the changes, I can live with it. It's not bad, it's just those three. One of them I might be able to fix. One of them I might revisit. The other one, first one, the rat, yeah gonna let it go. I got plenty of projects in the future where I can make them better. You learn along the way. It's always about just trying to improve. And I push this message of, you know, don't focus on your mistakes too much. Don't worry about them. Just move on. Just roll with it. Just improvise and shift and pivot and be proud of what you did. Even if it's a failure, it's a success because you tried and you learned something. And I wholeheartedly believe that. Still, there's a couple things that still get to me despite that mindset. It's okay to sometimes regret things. Uh, but also you should embrace a lot of those pains and challenges and things that went wrong and just, just, just go with it, go with the flow. I'm curious to know what you personally have on your list for the biggest regrets and what you've, more importantly, what you've done with them. Things that bug you, do they just sit on a shelf bugging you? Did you get rid of them so you don't have to look at them? Did you try to fix them and make it better or worse? Uh, did you redo them? What did you do? How'd you deal with that? Like if you have your one thing that really Oh, I regret doing and screwed up. Did what'd you do? What was it? I I hope you guys enjoyed this lazy video. I know some of you won't, and uh, haters gonna hate and say that I'm lazy, and I'm absolutely lazy this week. And I think those of you who really you know respect and love this channel and enjoy me as a creator, probably thrilled that I'm taking a break and loving life right now and giving myself some mental health healing. I struggle with all sorts of mental health problems, uh, and right now I'm in a phase where. I'm doing something that's working and making me feel really good and really happy. So I'm gonna enjoy it even if I can only enjoy it for one more day. I'm gonna keep doing these happy outside gardening, landscaping things throughout the summer as we build very cool, exciting things. I have a lot of stuff planned. I'm gonna be back next week with, uh, with something cool. It has something to do with Egypt tell you that much. I hope you enjoyed the video nonetheless. Hit the like button if you did. Let me know, like I said in your comments, what your you know big regret is and how you fixed it. If you want to pick up some tools and supplies to help support the channel and my new gardening hobby, uh, check out blackmagiccraft.ca uh, to get your tools and supplies. Purchasing through those links helps this channel out. And of course, the best way you can help me and this channel and all of the other viewers who like this channel is by supporting the channel on Patreon. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. That's it. I'm out. I'm going to go get my hands dirty, dig in some mud, and I recommend you do the same or whatever it is that is making you happy right now, as long as it's not something really bad or destructive. Keep on doing it. You deserve it. Cheers.